Lionel Borglia with Siemens Pilan Software. Today I am going to prepare a model of an hydraulic excavator for real-time applications. My presentation will be split in three parts. The first part will be the presentation of the actual model of the hydraulic excavator, the working scenario, some results, and already some tips in order to maintain the simulation time acceptable. The second step will be to present uh, the methodology of model reduction together with the different tools that, uh, that supports this methodology. And as a third step, I will uh, explain how, to, how we can use this real-time model within an MSMSIM environment. So, the first step is to uh, present the actual model of hydraulic excavator. So, what we have here is a full model starting from the combustion engine to the mechanisms. So the model includes the combustion engine with a first level model of the engine control. All the actuation system uh, included into the, into the excavator, starting from the swing motor and all the hydraulic cylinder for the boom, the dipper and the bucket. All these hydraulic actuation systems are connected also with a 3D mechanism, which is represented in this part of the system. In order to simulate the working scenario, we use the state chart functionality of LMS AIMSIM. The state chart functionality will define the different steps of the working cycle, and the working cycle will be the traditional uh, JCMAS uh, cycle that is used for um, regulation. So some results of the simulation. Here we have access to the displacement of uh, the actuators, the hydraulic jack for the boom, the dippers, and the bucket, and also the, uh, the swing uh, angle. So here we see uh, the working scenario, including the digging phase. Then uh, the boom is raising. Uh, at the same time, the turret rotates. So we release uh, the bucket inside the truck and we come back to the initial position. So in order to perform this cycle, it takes 20 seconds of, let's say, uh, of, uh, of working cycle time. Let's have a look now at the, at the CPU time. So the, the CPU time of the simulation, so simulating 30 seconds will take is takes uh, 180 seconds of simulation, so roughly six times uh, the real time. So we are six times slower than the real time. So now, how to make uh, this model uh, real time? So we are going to use a first tool, which is um, the performance analyzer. So within the performance analyzer, we have access to the results, to some information of the, of the solver. For example, the current integration step and also the state contribution, meaning which part of the system are CPU time consuming. With frequency analysis, we have the possibility to, uh, to visualize at, uh, what are the maximum frequency of the system, what, what is the maximum frequency of the system for at the different uh, CPU time. So we can see here that we have a uh, a big, um, a very huge frequency around 20 seconds, uh, which is around 100 kilohertz. So this frequency is indeed very high, and we will try to reduce this frequency. But to reduce this frequency, we need to understand where, what are the components that are involved in, uh, to, to create, what are the components that create this very high frequency. So once the simulation is finished, we can have a look at the results of the model projection tool. So this tool is a graphical tool that allows to show uh, for each uh, linearization time what are the high frequency and what are the components that are involved in this high frequency. So here we click on the maximum frequency of the system, close to 100 kHz, and we can see that two components are involved in this high frequency. And these components are two hydraulic chambers, which are included, which are included into the deeper actuation system. What's happening at 20.4 um, seconds of the simulation? We see here that we have the pressures that are almost equivalent, and uh, we have a cross-sectional area between the two uh, chambers, which is very high. 
that, so that creates uh, the very high frequency. So one solution could be either to reduce uh, the size of the orifice or to increase the volumes. It's what has been done with a, uh, with a step two model where the volume of the chambers have been increased between from 2 liters to 10 liters. And as a consequence, the high frequency has been uh, removed and the calculation time has been reduced. So now let's compare the results of the actual, the simplified model with uh, the initial one. So first we compare the results of the simulation. So of course the modification in the parametrization should not impact the result of the simulation. So here we compare the displacement of the deeper cylinder between the initial model and the simplified model. So we see that we have limited modification in terms of, term of results. It's up to the, to, the, to the engineer to understand if, it, if this modification is acceptable or not. But if we look in terms of CPU time, we will see that we, we, we have a huge benefit from the modification of the volume of the chambers between because here we have reduced the CPU time from 180 seconds to roughly 85 seconds. So we are almost divided more than two the CPU time. So step by step, uh, we continue the analysis, still using uh, the two different tools that I presented before the performance analyzer and the model projection tool. And we can reach um, almost um, real time. The last step is to make sure that uh, the model can run with uh, a fixed step solver. In, in our case, the model is stable with a fixed step uh, solve, a Euler fixed step solver at 0 0.15 milliseconds. So let's have a look at the simulation. Uh, and here you can see that definitely the CPU time is, is real time, almost. And the results of the simulation are in line with expectation, meaning that they are the same as the initial, initial results. So now uh, we have different possibility of using this real time model. The first one can be for uh, control unit validation. So this model can be exported to any uh, real-time uh, platform, DSpace, ETAS, and so on, and can be used by control uh, engineers to validate their real ECU. Another way of using this real-time uh, simulator is to uh, perform human-in-the-loop simulation, meaning that uh, we have the possibility to interact uh, directly with, uh, with the model and see the reaction of uh, the excavator in function of uh, the operating, um, in, in function of the, of the sequence uh, required by the operator. So for doing this, we can use the dashboard functionality of MSIM together with the interactive um, signals that can be connected with the different servo valves here of the system. So let's have a look. Let's run now uh, the simulation and we will interact with, um, with the model. So we set a, a final time of uh, five minutes, for example, and then running the simulation, we have the possibility to interact with the model. So for example, we rotate the bucket, the swing here. An output of the model here is the power that is requested by the excavator that is required um, to, to rotate and so on. So we, you can have a look. We can see how the system uh, behaves with the real mechanism. As a conclusion, I have demonstrated the capabilities of LMS AIM-SIM to uh, develop a real-time model of an hydraulic excavator, starting from a non-real-time model to reach real-time uh, simulation, using the performance analyzer and the model projection tool. Now the model can be used either for human uh, operator, operator interaction or for the validation of control strategies.
Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website. Thank you.